Hi, it's Marion with a, um, a more personal than usual video blog. Um, not that actually I've got really any track record of impersonal <laughs> video blogs as I've only done one before. But anyway, th this one is, um, yeah, it's about, it's directly about my experience um, as an inpatient, which is why I decided, um, I don't know, to literally talk about it rather than write about it. Um, so, uh, I suppose it was about a fortnight ago, um, after um, a couple of exceptionally stressful days, um, and in the absence of my, um, in the summer absence of my normally um, rather extensive and um, very robust and very specialist mental health support team, <coughs> in particular my out of hours crisis therapist, um, I thought he was away. He wasn't. But anyway, I went into meltdown and really couldn't cope. Um, I've got borderline personality disorder um, and this was my, I don't know, something like my fifth admission. Um, but I haven't, um, haven't been in hospital for a couple of years now. Um, uh, so, um, so I was pretty sort of desperate. And um, my, my local hospital um, is St Anne's in Tottenham. I love St Anne's. I love Barnet, Enfield and Harrogate. I'm deeply, deeply grateful to them. Um, and um, certainly wouldn't be sitting here chatting were it not, not for them, um, both in terms of their inpatient support to me and their um, even more extensive um, support to me when I'm at large in the community. Um, but St Anne's is an old and very difficult site, you know, we're not talking Harrison House in Grimsby here, which is very, very f new and fabulous and, and really um, very specialistly designed and so on. Um, it's a sort of very old traditional rundown site and um, staff and management, it must be said, do heroically with it. Um, and Perhaps the first thing I should say really is to any St Anne's staff listening, watching, um, thank you. Um, and sorry, yeah, sorry about all the little incidents um, and specialing and all the rest of it. Um, I, um, so yeah, I'm not an easy um, inpatient um, and the reason I end up in hospital is because I can't contain my suicidality any longer. So um, c combined with um, a, um, I was going to say a propensity, oh, that's a bit patronising myself, anyway, um, a necessity as I experience it to um, self-harm when I'm really, really stressed out, um, that makes me not an easy patient. There's also <laughs> all the stuff about the fact that I've visited a lot of hospitals, <laughs> really, really amazing wonderful hospitals, and um, I, I try to shut up about what I've seen elsewhere um, and on the whole I manage um, it's just actually the only time I, I did start spouting and about the research the evidence base was when I was being specialed and really really didn't want to be specialed and I mentioned um, um, Len Bower's work on um, on, on special observation at uh, City University and the fact that um, they've discovered that 15 minute obs are generally safer than um, than specialling someone. Um, uh, check out the research, it's very very good and very very important. Um, and it works, I got freed from my um, my one-to-one -one, um, nurse attached to me so that was much much better all around really. Anyway, um, big thanks to St Anne's um, and um, the Haringey Ward staff. Um, it was a very different experience for me this time round for, for several reasons. Firstly, it was a mix, mixed ward. Secondly, um, it was one of these new breed of assessment or triage wards. I think the maximum stay is 10 days on it. Um, um, and um, well, actually the third is much, much longer. <laughs> the third is the third, fourth, fifth and sixth, but it's, it's about the vastly improved physical facilities, access to garden, lock on my bedroom door and so on made a huge difference. Um, I think what I might do is just give two very different, um, I don't know, anecdotes or stories or whatever, which will give a feel for, for how it was. Um, 
Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I think one of the things I meant to say was that there's an active therapeutic activities program. I should have said that. Um, really fantastic, um, OT led, um, very sound and um, enjoyable and varied with physical activity and art and music and, um, you know, emotional stuff and so on. Really very, very good. So the two incidents, or episodes or whatever. The first, um, the first was when I lost it and the second was when somebody else was <laughs> really losing it. Um, the staff were completely, completely wonderful, um, almost all of them. But um, a night nurse just was very, very dismissive. I only just arrived and um, I felt very, very sort of fobbed off and I was not at my most calm and rational anyway, almost by definition. Um, and I don't know, it was, I suppose I want to describe what it's like because I can completely, totally see that it must seem like the most ludicrous overreaction um, to a member of staff being arguably little more than, um, I don't know, <laughs> indifferent or brusque or something or other. It's not terrible, you're not sort of shouting at me or anything, but, but my experience of it at that stage was, um, uh, I mean, it sounds incredibly melodramatic, um, but given all the stuff with BPD and um, um, problems with um, identity and even knowing whether one exists and stuff, I mean, weird stuff, but, you know, it is a mental illness. Um, my experience of being um, dissed as I experienced it or fobbed off and, and, and ignored um, was, in addition to the usual stuff about being annoying and humiliating and so on, but actually I found, I found it... Um, I, and literally sort of annihilating it, it, I know it's very melodramatic, just sort of detonates my sense of self um, and so I cut um, and um, I, a, a, a nurse was um, soon in the room, um, I suppose because I stormed off, <laughs> not quietly, <laughs> um, and, um, and at first she was actually angry with me which is not it's not textbook response <laughs> it just of course escalated everything but um and she was pissed off with me for being rude i had told the member staff to fuck off um which i've never ever done before but um however <laughs> i don't know provoked i felt as an inpatient i've always managed to um not say that anyway i said it and all the rest of it and so she was cross i, I thought really unreasonably and, and also it was slightly missing the point <laughs> And, and also it was, you know, we had a bit of a sort of first aid issue sort of going on. Um, but she calmed down um, quickly and um, and enabled me to calm down. I suppose this is the thing that... Um, and she was really, really tenacious, but in a good way. Um, she really was not going to sort of... Um, she wasn't going to leave until I had re-established some sort of connection with her, a sort of karma connection with her. Um, and um, and she was great and I did calm down. I was still pissed off with her and everything, but I calmed down enough to agree to at least have you know, the wound sorted out and stuff, which she did magnificently. Um, I have to say, very, very good at steri stripping. <laughs> which is a real skill and, and, and was a relief um, but also I was slightly braced for maybe um, the experience of having my wounds dressed you know I, I was just braced with possibly having a small punitive element and partly I felt I deserved that because you know it's sympathetic to cut it feels and you know, all the rest of it anyway just none of that just very sort of gentle and professional and caring and soothing um, and in fact subsequently um, she was one of the um, two main members of staff that I came to really, really rely on during my stay. I can't remember if I said I was just there five days. Anyway, just the five days. <laughs> Big relief for this and Dan stuff when I left, I bet. Um, so that, that's one, um, um, I suppose, one story. Um, I, I suppose uh, really labouring the point that, that um, you know, when we're in a bad state, um, we are, you know, almost by definition, sort of 
you know, um, or, or the extent or the manifestation of uh, our distress is, um, will certainly appear um, highly unreasonable and irrational and so on. But there is a core um, that actually is highly rational, um, that, that is rational in relation to our experiences, our illness, our symptoms, and also possibly sort of bits of history about how we've, um, you know, how it's been for us as an inpatient. So there was that one. Second story, very, very different. Um, it was about, it's about why can't consultants just tell us broadly when they're going to see us in so-called ward rounds or um, I think on um, Haringey Ward they were just called meetings, which is possibly a little too vague because it was a bit of a surprise going to a meeting seeing a doctor there, it was a little bit confusing. Anyway, um, but the lack of any sort of time frame is... It, I, I can't understand it. Why can't they just go to the local 99p shop and buy a diary and sort of write out when they're going to see who and, and sort of, you know, make that known? Anyway, it causes mayhem. It really, really um, makes patients, including me, really angry. It's really unsettling. And for me, it was inconvenient because I had a work call I needed to make and so on. You know, I still have my real life sort of ticking over. Um, and so I was sort of low-key, um, you know, irritated and frustrated on this particular day when I was waiting to see the doctor um, and um, but another patient on the ward um, was much more expensive about how pissed off he was and and he was really angry quite a big guy and shouting and sort of generally storming around and so on and um, I mean it, this was somebody that um, you know, I'd already had you know nice conversations with and um, shared many cigarettes with and so on, um, and I didn't feel scared. I just absolutely, it just seemed very very clear that he was really really pissed off, mainly with the doctors, slightly you know with the rest of the staff just by sort of association, and, um, and he wasn't you know angry with me. So you know why would he turn on me? I, so I felt perfectly safe, and more than safe. <laughs> And I know this may go down very, very badly out there, but it is, it's the truth, so here it is. Um, I actually felt pleased that he was expressing what I felt. Um, and, um, yeah, um, which isn't, it's not impressive on my part, but that is sort of what it was like. And I, I suppose I just wanted to make that point because particularly there's been all this recent publicity about... Um, Gail Porter and her admission and how terrifying all these sort of crazy men were that she was with and I found her descriptions of her fellow patients um, well let's just say very very different to my experience which was um, first time on a, on a mixed ward loved it to my amazement really really liked it I liked the men well most of the men that I was with as much as I liked the women um, and and it was fun and gives a certain sort of I don't know rather enjoyable I found sort of I don't know it was edginess or what but just um I don't know it was it was good it, it completely it completely worked for me but um and so there is there's just this expectation that you know women will be or will feel vulnerable and so on and uh, that's not to say that you know um it was not to speak for anyone else basically and I know many women and met some men you know have very difficult experiences um on wards but i'm just saying that for me at four foot nine um and middle-aged and sort of um with an inability to sprint very fast um even a very even an episode where the staff were really sort of um you know concerned and you know on high alert and you know were absolutely on the case as it were it um i don't know i, I I I wasn't scared or disturbed and indeed was slightly relieved that um, somebody was um, vividly expressing my rather sort of at that stage feeble frustration. So um, all in all a um, no it was, it, was, it was a fantastic experience it it did the sort of the necessary thing which is just keep me safe um, until I'd sort of calmed down and was feeling you know considerably more stable and also until um, my various sort of therapists and psychiatrists and so on were back um, so I could resume my life. Um, okay, just two more things then. 
one is um, is I think should be very very simple to sort and, and would make a huge difference um, and I've heard it I've read it I've said it many times but um, it, it really can't be sufficiently stressed that when a patient comes to see a member of staff usually a nurse um, and it's not possible for um, the nurse to see them right then if they could give a time frame for when it'll be possible to see um, to see them, which in fact, you know, most of the nurses on the wards absolutely did. So they, you know, simply said, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm tied up at the moment, but I can be with you in, I don't know, about 10 minutes. Or, or even, I, I can't see you for another hour, I've got a meeting, but would it be okay if we met at 12 or something? But just giving a time frame is, um, <laughs> firstly, it's courteous, but also it's, um, it's just helpful. It's, it's just like waiting for the W7 bus. Much better to know that it's not coming for 22 minutes, although in fact the W7 is very frequent. But anyway, better to know it and then you can, you know, pace yourself and you can do other things in the meantime. So that, um, I, I don't know, if that simple change can be made across the board, um, I think it'll really improve everyone's quality of life on the ward. The, um, the other issue is much, much more complicated and I have um, no realistic um, ideas for uh, addressing it and it's clearly a perpetual problem in um, locked environments um, including prison and that is about cigarette supply about people who don't have cigarettes asking those who do to have one or whatever and it just causes and that seems to be the main cause of friction between patients um, just as arguably hanging out smoking with each other is, is one of the most bonding, I think, good fun experiences. Um, but the flip side is the whole supply um, issue. I'd be really fascinated to know if any of you have, um, have, have tried anything that, that might have worked in any way, or even that hasn't worked. So, you know, it can be crossed off lists or whatever, or adapted, but we'd really be grateful for any ideas you've got. I mean, one of the biggest differences was um, this was the first time um, that I'd been at St Anne's on a ground floor ward and having 24 access, 24 7 <laughs> access to the garden was brilliant for so many reasons because of the smoking, but also just for the sort of space and the outdoorsness. Um, just, it's just pleasant being outdoors in the summertime, it was sunny and so on, and nice for visitors and so on. OK, well, thank you for listening. I hope some of that's been coherent and that not too much of it's been provocative and that some of it's been useful. OK, thanks. Bye.